Where aren't you? Oh. Discussion um, that emanates from what we call the Thinking Together series. <coughs> Thinking Together is a concept that started with the Research and Teaching Associates of the School of Law. So what happens is that every week we get together and we discuss anything and everything and just stimulate interest in particular areas of law, outside of law, whatever. We just get together and think together. Okay? So this week we decided to do something a little different. And this week we decided to have a public discussion involving different people who have never done law, some of them, some have done law, but nevertheless, different people, different walks of life, coming together, discussing a very interesting topic, Satanist, Christian, and the Constitution. I think this is particularly topical because in the last couple of weeks, we've noticed that people have been asking the question, is Satanism a protected religion in South Africa? In fact, a petition was recently signed so the effect uh, that maybe it's time that we actually say Satanism is a protected religion. And therefore, what the Ministry of Education, the Department of Education is doing by sending in pastors into Christian schools is a violation of the right to religion. Because if it is a religion and you're sending people into schools saying, don't teach people Satanism and help them get out of Satanism, then what you're effectively doing is limiting that right to religion that they potentially enjoy. So this discussion this afternoon is primarily focused on that and to see what our constitution actually says. Is there a right to religion that protects Satanism? Or have we made this all up? Is the noise that's out there and the noise that we've been hearing, is that justified? Does it exist in our law? That's up to the panel to help us discuss and more importantly, the floor at large. Why a public discussion is that we hope that everyone will get involved at some point and contribute and uh, make it more interesting. So the panel is essentially there to give us starting points. So I'll say a couple of things, a few words, throw a couple of lines. Uh, I hope that what they say will actually get you thinking enough for you to raise your hand and say I have something to say. Okay? So we expect a lot of public participation and that will take us through the first half. And the second half is something slightly more controversial to trade on because it actually interferes with the actual substance of Christian doctrine. So the question then becomes, if as a Christian, your mandate is to go out into the world and preach the good news and to tell people about Christ, does that actually include you saying to people, God does not like homosexuality and because of that you're going to go to hell? And the legal question emanating from that is, that particular statement? exercised under your faith, does that amount to hate speech under the South African Constitution? It may seem like an obvious question, no, it's always been done. But in American, uh, some American states, they've actually decided to say that it might be a violation of people's human rights to go around and tell, tell people that uh, you are, for instance, going to burn in hell because of your choice to be in a same-sex relationship. And the question we're posing this afternoon is, does the South African Constitution have the same scope as the American uh, framework and could we have a situation where potentially one day the Constitutional Court says Christians you may not tell people that they're going to go to hell. Okay. So interesting as that sounds we are actually <coughs> going to start off with the satanic debate but before I do that courtesy demands that I introduce our very very esteemed panel and I will start with um, Adele who is at the far right and she is with uh, the task team of the Department of Basic Education, and she works on a particular task force for harmful religious practices. So what she does is essentially get into schools, discuss this whole issue of harmful religious practices, and actually helps the department itself come up with solutions to what has increasingly become a problem in our schools. So welcome to Adele. 
Um, she is flanked by the Family Policy Institute director. Family Policy Institute is a Christian faith organization that promotes the traditional nuclear family and argues for the uh, continued existence of such a family. So obviously, they will become very, very controversial later when we discuss homosexuality. And that's why we think that they're very appropriate to bring to the panel this afternoon. Next to that is uh, Mr. Hunja. Mr. Hunja is a teaching associate in the School of Law. He is uh, a man I mock a lot because he loves jurisprudence and I don't. But uh, uh, this becomes interesting because he teaches, amongst other things, religion and the law. So from a jurist point of view, what is the connection? Is there a connection? Should there be a connection? And he'll help us discuss that uh, today. Next to that is someone who is uh, no stranger to a lot of people. He is one of our tutors in the School of Law, uh, but equally a very engaging and intellectual young man, Mr. Kolisi, and he's going to help us discuss that. And this is all part of us getting everyone involved in the discussion and making sure that he also contributes and gives us a point of view from the student's perspective. Lastly, but certainly not the least here, Mr. Mashudu Nongkwelo. He is a candidate attorney with Norton Norris Fulbright, but is actually here as uh, an individual, you know, separate from his uh, employers. And I says I should make special mention of that. Uh, I assume there's something in the contract, but uh, that's fine. So, thank you to the panel for coming through. And to kick this all off, we will start by watching two interesting clips. And... I might just warn a couple of, uh, well, a few of you might get intimidated, but uh, this is what you decided to come for. <laughs> <laughs> as a belief in and reverence for devils. However, this religion is much more complex than this definition. Satanism is not classified as people worshipping Satan or Lucifer, as many people assume due to the misinformation of the religion. In fact, just as various Buddhists do not worship Buddha, Satanists do not worship Satan. Satanists believe, contrary to many other religions, to be selfish and to fill your own self-indulgent nature. Most people cannot understand this principle because in many religions, the goal is that people should be raised to be selfless, but Satanists disagree. This idea falls into the argument that humans are just another animal and should live as any other animal in nature does. This form of Satanism is known as Levian Satanism. According to the official Church of Satan, Levian Satanism is the only true type of Satanism. Satanism today has an assortment of sins, rules, and rituals that makes it a unique, interesting religion. Anton Zander LeVay is the founder of the Church of Satan and started modern-day Satanism in 1966, writing the Satanic Bible in which he declared the nine Satanic statements of Satanism. These rules are indulgence, viral existence, undefiled wisdom, kindness to those deserving of it, vengeance, responsibility to the responsible, Man is just another animal, gratification of all one's desires, and best friend of the Christian church. Indulgence refers to how one should not shun away from any desire or want he or she may have. Since humans are just animals in nature, they should not resist their urges and wishes. The statement of vital existence accounts that other religions use a variety of substances, as LeVay calls spiritual pipe dreams, to reach enlightenment. Furthermore, the inner animal instinct strives to survive when faced with something that threatens its existence. LeVay then states how Satanists should have undefiled wisdom. This means that if one knows something is true, they should stand behind it. With everything else, one should be skeptical until it is proven to be true. Satanists, contrary to popular belief and the stereotype that they are put under, are not bad people. They also believe in kindness to people who deserve it. LeVay explains that this is not wasting love on ingrates. Christianity has a view of turning the other cheek. Satanists do not share this viewpoint. They believe if someone attacks you, 
you must attack back. Additionally, the Satanic Bible states our responsibility is given to the responsible. In other words, the person that is best suited for a job should do it. For instance, someone that has the ability to be a leader should lead. A topic that has been continually brought up is how man or woman are just basic animals, but is the most vicious of all the animals. In addition to being labeled as animals, Satanism acknowledges how we should gratify all of our desires or fetishes. The last satanic statement by LeVay is that Satanism is the best friend of the Christian church. With this statement, LeVay is mocking Christianity and admits how Satanism could not exist without it. Just as Christianity has its seven deadly sins, Satanism has its own nine. The first of these sins, stupidity, is considered the cause of all these sins. Stupidity is the cause of all the other following sins. Pretentiousness is the second satanic sin, which is the intent to attract attention unto oneself. Satanism, although a vibrant religion, stresses for followers not to attract unnecessary attention to themselves. The third satanic sin is celibism. Celibism is being skeptical to everything that is learned. This advises to not take something as fact unless in your own mind it is truly a fact. <coughs> Fourth of the nine satanic sins is self-deceit. This is the process of ignoring an opposing viewpoint or a logical argument. This can be done by being able to listen to all sides of a conflict and rationalize both sides before coming to a conclusion. Fifth of the satanic sins is herd conformity. As animals, Satanists say we should not conform to our herds. We should be outstanding individuals. The next satanic sin, similar with the fourth satanic sin, is the lack of perspective. One should listen to both sides of an argument before taking sides. The seventh sin is forgetfulness of past orthodoxies. This means, when something new is invented, look at it closer before accepting. To check, see if it really is not something old just restated or repackaged to seem that it is new. Counterproductive pride is the eighth sin. This sin refers to how Satanists should be proud, but if their pride is not productive and beneficial to mankind or the world, he or she should not fulfill it. And finally, the last sin of Satanism is having a lack of aesthetics. This means that Satanists should possess good taste and see the beauty in the world. You cannot be a Satanist if you cannot find your true self and express yourself with visually appealing items that reflect your person. As well as having sins and statements, the Church of Satan also has 11 satanic rules. These self-explanatory rules are 1. Do not give opinions or advice unless you are asked. <laughs> 2. Do not tell your troubles to others unless you are sure they want to hear them. 3. When in another's lair, Show him respect, or else do not go there. 4. If a guest in your lair annoys you, treat him cruelly and without mercy. 5. Do not make sexual advances unless you are given the mating signal. 6. Do not take that which does not belong to you unless it is a burden to the other person and he cries out to be relieved. 7. Acknowledge the power of magic if you have employed it successfully to obtain your desires. If you deny the power of magic after having called upon it with success, you will lose all you have obtained. 8. Do not complain about anything to which you need not subject yourself. 9. Do not harm little children. 10. Do not kill non-human animals unless you are attacked or for your food. 11. When walking in open territory, bother no one. If someone bothers you, ask him to stop. If he does not stop, destroy him. <laughs> Some of these rules are related to today's average person and may pertain to anyone's modern everyday life. Some rules, however, are on the bizarre and cruel side of what in today's norm, but most of them, if followed, could be considered understandable and not that strange. Satanism, as defined by the Church of Satan, is the only true Satanism that exists. Some other types of Satanism, 
that it may be confused with as misconceptions about concrete Satanism, teen Satanism, phony Satanism, and Gothic Satanism. Concrete Satanism is consisted of insubordinate Christians rebelling against the world of Jehovah or God. They believe that Satan is a deity and the lord of all evil and want to rise up against anything that has to do with Jehovah. Furthermore, the word Satan is derived from the word Seta, which means to turn away. The Egyptian god Seta, or also known as Set, was known as the original god of evil. This type of Satanism is also known as Setanism. Another type of Satanism is known as Teen Satanism. This type is not a true religion in the sense that it has no centralized organization and does not have any organized beliefs. The Satanists in this group tend to be teens or young adults that vandalize various places with satanic symbols and are rebellious for generally a short time. They may also sacrifice small animals, which is in direct violation with Rule 10 of Satanism. Phony Satanism is another Satanist type. The people of this type can be identified as serial killers using Satanism as a scapegoat, using a Satan made me do it excuse. Others that fall into this category are some heavy metal bands that associate themselves with Satan for record sales and publicity. The last type of Satanism is Gothic Satanism. Gothic Satanism was an invention of the Christian church during the time of the witch burnings in the Middle Ages. It is an imaginary religion having no documentation of its real existence. It was used by the Christian church as a way to scare people into joining their religion. These Satanists were most women who were accused of taking part in satanic rituals that consisted of orgies, eating babies, or dancing nude. This, for the Christian church, was punishable upon death for going against God's will. Okay, that is the <coughs> first clip. And the second clip is actually from an interview that was um, conducted with the founder of the and this man literally is the founder and father of the Church of Satan. And this is what he had to say before he passed on, I think in 1996. I haven't come forth in a great many years because I didn't want to be relegated to another guest on a TV talk show. But I can assure you Satanism is here to stay. Satan can take the form of a beautiful woman. Satan can take the form of a sleek animal. An automobile can be very satanic. These things can be anthropomorphized into Satan. Well, when I was a teenager, I was interested in the occult. And the occult in those days meant you got dream books and you got books on fortune telling and all that sort of thing. And the closest thing there was to anything about <coughs> calling up spirits or demons and that sort of thing was a lot of gobbledygook where you stood around in a circle and you used the protective names of Jehovah and Jesus and all that. And uh, I tried it. Oh, Lord knows I tried it, but it didn't work. <laughs> and so I thought to myself, well... If I'm going to call up any demons, if I'm going to get any magical power, if I'm going to get anything going my way, I better get on the side of those guys instead of protecting myself from them. I love life very much. And it's been said that I can't possibly love life, that I'm a very unhappy man, or must be a very unhappy man. And I would say that I'm a very happy man, an extremely happy man, in a compulsively unhappy world. <laughs> the Church of Satan would have nothing to do with, <laughs> with something like breeders or abductions of children or stealing of animals or that sort of thing. Because, uh, Again, the question, why, certainly isn't very satanic to want to take anything against its will. Sex goddesses of the past have been largely as a result of luck more than anything else. However, in the case of Jane Mansfield, uh, she was an active member of the Church of Satan and certainly under tragic circumstances left the Church of Satan. 
the situation concerning Miss Monroe. That was a long, long time ago, long before the Church of Satan. However, she did have an unswerving interest in the dark side of life. And I think that was one of the main reasons that we managed to hit it off the way we did. To the detractors or the accusers or the people of the other side that would say that Satanists would like to kill animals, sacrifice animals, I would say that they would make ideal human sacrifices. I love animals. I've always been part of animals. Animals are part of me. I believe that all churches of all denominations should be taxed to the hilt. If churches were taxed as any other business, because that's what they are, simply businesses, if they were taxed, the national debt would be wiped out overnight. found in the first couple of pages of the Satanic Bible, which um, as a gift from the School of Law, you will all be given a copy of. <laughs> um, that, that was actually a joke. Um, <laughs> but uh, it is available online if you go to the Church of Satan, you can get it online. It's about 50 pages long, so you can have a look for yourself. Everything that was just shown there is actually taken from the Church of Satan. Um, so it's not a Christian point of view being you know, imposed on, on the church, it's actually from the church itself. Now, having said that, our first speaker actually just doesn't work with the Department of Basic Education. Um, she actually was involved in Satanism for 20 years. So, who better than her to speak on this particular topic and give us her views to start off with in this conversation. Mm. <laughs> Hi guys. Okay, so um, I was involved in Satanism for 20 years, and um, uh, uh, that was about 19 years ago that I left Satanism. And um, I'm currently working with the Department of Basic Education to combat um, any harmful re or potentially harmful religious practices that um, well that we can see in schools there's a lot of things happening right now a lot of crimes that happened over the past um, five to ten years in South Africa with regards to um, especially younger people um, stating that they're involved in Satanism and then um, you know committing murder um, sacrifices um, well there's a lot of people even coming from from the Church of Satan itself and from other pagan societies stating that um, Satanism is not involved in these crimes and they're not connected to these people. And um, currently we're asking the question, is it just about um, uh, Satanism as a whole and um, you know the, con the, the um, constitution of the church? Um, can we say that this is Satanism or is it, or should we um, regard these facts um, when it comes to people's belief? Is it, is it people believing in these things, that's why they're doing it, or they, are they part of the bigger picture? And um, we see a lot of um, the crimes, especially with the South African police, um, the, the sacrifices in schools, um, uh, a lot of police officers are called out to scenes. Um, those who believe that Satanism is playing a huge role in our schools, 
um, have a lot of experience because um, when you go to out to a scene and you have to clean up the blood afterwards, it's very real. You can't deny what's happening. And then on the other hand, of course, we have the Church of Satan saying that there isn't anything like this happening. But yeah, that's my role that I'm playing. And then, of course, I think my, one of the main things that gives me credibility in this field is that um, 20 years ago, I kidnapped a little boy and I was about to sacrifice him in a satanic ritual when I was stopped by people who hunted us down, they found us, and they, they actually um, stepped into the ritual and they stopped the entire, you know, the, the ritual, the, the act that we were busy with. And um, so this, this, the, there is um, witnesses to my story, and that's why I just feel that we have to drive this, this thing, this topic of Satanism, that it's real, that it is extremely destructive, and it is a potentially harmful religious practice as can any other religion also possibly be. But currently, we don't have stories in schools of Christian churches sacrificing children. Not yet. <laughs> and, um, and I just want to add to these rules, uh, the, the, the nine satanic rules. Um, in my experience, the tenth one should be um, a friend help you move, but a good friend help you move a body. <laughs> that was also a joke. <laughs> So, I'm going to play the very controversial role here and get to get the truth out of our panelists. I'm sure the audience would like it. Yes? Okay. I'm going to ask a very personal question. Right? What got you into Satanism in the first place? Okay, that is a controversial question. Um, I was involved, well, I was born into a family that also practiced Satanism. So it was a generational thing, um, family members, and I was born into Satanism as other children would be born into other religions. And um, I got used to, to um, uh, Satanism from a very young age, got used to the rituals and the practices, and you know, that's my, that was the, the, the story of my life. And in, term, in terms of what actually happens in Satanism? Ha, huh. <laughs> this is also controversial controversial because the Church of Satan says, for example, that um, uh, the original Church of Satan, or there's a lot of churches today that claim to be churches of Satan, but they're not involved in the original um, organization of Satanism that was started by Anton LaVey or um, Alistair Crowley or these guys, or even um, uh, the, the um, Michael Aquino. But um, I think with, with regards to is, wait, let's just talk about Satan or Christianity for a while or even other traditions. You, you, or, uh, traditions and groups um, evolve over time. And they, there's a lot of smaller groups practicing Satanism, even though they're not affiliated with the Church of Satan, even though they don't um, have the paperwork from the Church of Satan in Europe or America, but they still practice a form of Satanism. And, um, and in my experience, the things that I was involved in was definitely blood sacrifices, human sacrifices, animal sacrifices, um, sex rituals, um, a lot of details in these things. Um, but it's not only I that experience those things. I also see the same thing happening in schools, for example. So I see blood rituals, I see animal sacrifices, I see human sacrifices in the same way that I've experienced it myself. And there is a demand in Satanism um, for more and more and more rituals or, or sacrifices. You never, one sacrifice is never enough. These children have to give themselves, um, give, give off themselves, give off their family members. So the price that they have to pay is very, very big. And um, so I've experienced it personally and there was a lot of trauma and pain and, and stuff going in there. But um, we have a responsibility to speak about these things. And I always respect the Satanists if they come to me and they say to me that they're involved in Satanism, but they've never done any of these things. I would believe them um, uh, because I respect where they come from. And I'm sure that there, there are a few Satanists that, that have never you know, sacrificed any babies or animals or whatever. But um, in, in the, the bigger picture, there are these guys practicing these things. There are people in, in um, societies or in communities who demand sacrifices. When I go to schools and I talk about Satanism, not, not for the purpose of converting people to Christianity, but warning them against any harmful, potentially harmful religious practice. The question that I get most of these teenagers are, um, they want me to explain to them what Illuminati Satanism is like. So there's people getting up in the community, they claim to be some 
form of Illuminati Satanist. They have never been registered at the Church of Satan, but that doesn't mean that they don't believe what they are doing. They, they follow a belief. Um, so that's why we have to look at what is um, uh, registered, organized Satanism. Yeah, um, but that doesn't mean that just because you're not registered, you're not, you know, doing rituals or because you are registered you're not doing any rituals or sacrificing any um, children or giving blood sacrifices so I see how children have this desire and what these community leaders promised them is that they would get a lot of money and fame and because there's poverty these guys promises them um, riches and money and fame and they are willing to give the li their own lives and the lives of, um, of their family members to become rich and um, that's the mark that Satanism places on the lives of these, especially children, who's obviously gullible, and, and they fall for anything, and they don't have the discernment to, to know when someone is lying to them. But I see it when, when I have to go to a crime scene, and there's liters and liters of blood, and the entire community talk about this person that has been involved in Satanism for two or three years, and the, all the signs and the symbols and everything is there, and these witnesses, so um, there's a theory and there's what we see in practice, and um, it's horrific. I was planning to come actually in all black, and then someone said that might be inappropriate. <laughs> but uh, that goes to speak on in terms of the conceptions and misconceptions about Satanism. From your point of view, what is true and what is not true about what we've heard about Satanism? The black theory correct? <laughs> yeah, well, that makes every. <laughs> I can only talk of a, out of an of Afrikaner perspective, as you can hear, um, uh, that it would make a, every Afrikaner a Satanism at the Afrikaner funeral. <laughs> because um, then, on the other hand, um, I believe it's first in the 1940s when Satanists discovered the slimming effect of black. So, um, <laughs> black obviously is not a sign of Satanism. Um, maybe all of the symbolism as well. You know, there's there's some really important sim symbolism involved in Satanism, and it should be you know taken seriously. Um, but yeah, of course you also get the teenagers who just want to you know wonder where they grow up. They want to become a Satanist, so they, they would like use the symbolism and and they want to be vicious. I believe that there's a lot of lies and misconceptions about Satanism, um, but. Uh, it's not just uh, innocent religion, I'm sorry to say that, and um, it would be great if we can have a real Satanist that really <coughs> belong to the Church of Satan, and that's only my opinion, who can say that, um, you know, maybe we don't do that, but I want to acknowledge that there are some groups that's involved in sacrifices. Um, that would really help our cause, especially in, in our country with regards to all the sacrifices that we see. Is it really a problem, or are we just exaggerating? I wish. I really wish that we were exaggerate, exaggerating. We are seeing too many corpses, too many kids, too many families that's being destroyed. Um, yeah, I just, it's too much. And what for you draws the link between the killings and Satanists? What if it's random? Yeah, what, what if it's random? <laughs> it's a coincidence. It would be a great coincidence and I would be so happy. Unfortunately, it's where I come from. I've also been there with a dagger in my hand um, doing that sacrifice. Luckily, I was stopped in time. Um, I had a good support group. I had a, a, a good um, a company, you know, organization helping me, supporting me out of it. Um, and maybe that's one of the other things as well. If we, if we keep on denying that there is a problem, we will never help anyone. It, it, maybe it's, I don't want to say it's too late, but if we looked at this problem 10 years ago, um, it wouldn't have escalated the way it did. Now, you have to know that I'm not necessarily just against, no, I'm not against Satanism, I'm not against Satanists, I'm not against pagans or Wiccans, I'm not against the people, I'm against the actions. Because I do believe that one of the main things, and if I can just say something spiritual right now, one of the main things that we have as gifts from God our Creator is that we have free choice. And God respects our free <coughs> choice. So if someone wants to become a Satanist, I will respect that. I, but, but I do believe that we all have a responsibility to protect those who cannot protect themselves. And unfortunately, most of the times, it is young people and especially teenagers falling into the trap that's being deceived. And we should stop that. And maybe um, now is, is maybe it's a little bit too late to now get a task force. Um, you know, in the in the basic department of basic education, to help prevent any potentially harmful religious practices um, from taking place, 
And that's not only, as I said before, Satanism, but right now Satanism features, and the people doing these crimes, they're not ashamed to say that it's Satanism. They confess it, they say it, and there's so many witnesses to it. So I don't think it, this is a witch hunt. It has never been a witch hunt. And this is real. So from your perspective, if we took away all the sacrifice, would Satanism be okay? Okay, maybe, maybe you're asking the wrong person because it's personal for me, right? So I'm a little bit emotional when it comes to what I've experienced. Um, what I do know is that I have some friends that's still involved in Satanism. And I know that they are very nice people. And I have some pagan friends and weekend friends. And uh, now I'm, I'm not putting all of them under the same umbrella, but I'm, I'm just looking, you know, showing you the, the big picture. So I believe that um, if we take that away, yes, I, I think, you know, it's, yeah, why not? Um, but as I said, I am a little bit emotional about it. And this is part of my job. It is part of my job to, to go out to a crime scene and, you know, look at the mess and the, the havoc and the stuff. So, yes, um, so I, I, I won't necessarily um, encourage you to become a Satanist. Although I have friends in high and in low places. But I, I won't encourage you, but I don't think it will then be that big a problem. Interesting. To the floor, what do you think about Satanism? As a practice, as a religion? Yes? Should I stand or it's fine? Is the mic somewhere on? Um, greetings to you all. Um, this is very overwhelming, I must say. But I'm trying to detach myself from viewing this morally because I am a Christian and it's kind of scary what just happened. <laughs> so let me just breathe. <laughs> but I was looking at it from a um, legal perspective and it's kind of hard to say don't practice this religion because obviously the Constitution grants us to practice whatever religion we want to practice. If we look at, for instance, the way people who are Muslims are viewed in America, most of them are viewed as people who bomb uh, people and whatever. That's the status that they carry. And if you look at Satanism as well, what we've heard just sounded like, hmm, a normal day-to-day -day routine, you know, pleasing whatever desire, what, what. And we've also had um, extensions to that, and the part of sacrifice is just way too much. So what occurred to me was the Prince case. Just like in um, Rastafarian religion, you can practice your religion as a Rastafari, but you cannot smoke weed because it clashes with um, the drug, the drug, I forgot the name of the act, but there's an act that regulates uh, drugs. And with that said, then we can say, okay, these are the principles that we have of Satanism, you can practice it as your religion. However, when you, when you for instance, um, give out these people to, to sacrifice other people, you're infringing on the rights of life, etc. Then that's where we can limit it because not every right you, can, you possess is limitless. So with that said, it's, I, I wouldn't support it, I wouldn't advise anyone to support it. However, not granting people the opportunity to possess this right is also an infringement. So let's just limit the practice and let's just say, okay, have your Satanism, but don't be killing people, don't be doing anything that's infringing on other people's rights. Thank you. Uh, lady behind. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Awande. Two things. The first thing, where do we differentiate between a cult and a religion? What is the definition of each? And I think if we can define what is a religion which can be protected and what is a cult which is dangerous and uh, should, should be regulated, then we can carry on with this discussion. But as to what um, the young lady was saying, I think it's weird, sorry, that's very unlegal language, but hey, um, to say, uh, we'll allow your religion, but we're not going to allow certain practices. Because, I mean, that, that sort of itself infringes on the right to religion. Uh, how are you going to allow me to be a Christian, but not let me go to church, or don't let me take communion because you're banning alcohol or something like that? So I think you either have to allow the religion and its entire practice, or you have to not allow it. Uh, so I think it's a matter of firstly defining what religion is and then if we're gonna find, I mean, 
sacrifices, blood sacrifices, human sacrifices, that goes against some of the things practiced in Satanism go against fundamental human rights, the right to life. So I don't know how you're going to allow a religion that is based so much on sacrifice and killing people. I mean, the right to life is so important. Without the right to life, everything else in the Bill of Rights doesn't really matter. So yeah, that's my point. Um, before we take the next question, I know until you see did some research on whether or not South African law actually distinguishes between a religion and a cult. Um, that's very important because Section 15 doesn't have a cult provision to it. But, uh, sir, from your reason? <coughs> well, as she said, the lady earlier from the Rastafarian case, the Prince case, it's, South Africa does not really define what religion is. It just says you've got the right to religion, and it doesn't tell us what that right really entails. And partly, because it doesn't tell us what that right entails, we don't know the distinction between a cult and a religion, as Wanda just said. But I think the thinking behind the right to religion is the right to a belief, to a higher power. And so the question is, do Satanists, do people with cults, believe in a higher power? If they do, therefore they qualify under section, section 15 of the Constitution as having the right to religion. Whether that religion is good or bad, is a completely different question. But I think we have a problem with not, not jurisdiction. Like we have no definite definition of what the right to religion entails and what it doesn't entail, or its limitations. Next uh, question, sir. Um, hi. Uh, my name is Jeff. I would like to ask couple of questions because I mean acknowledge that there's Christianity and there's satanism and all of those other things. But what I feel like I, I think we are confusing what um, this religion stands for. Um, they have rules which mention which say nothing about human sacrifices. In fact I think these rules are to some extent, better than Christian rules and the Bible itself. And as controversial as this may seem, I think most of us are Satanists, but we do not say that we are. Because of the rules that um, were, were mentioned by Mr. LaVey, if I might, I mean, he said that the, the, the rules that they have uh, do not give opinions or advice unless you are asked to. And I think we, as normal people, stick to that. If I don't want your advice, you should not give, give it to me. Therefore, what? Am I a Satanist? And the people that go around killing people, I feel as if they're not, in fact, I don't feel they are not Satan, Satanists. They pose themselves as Satanists. And because, I mean, they don't kill people. They don't harm people. In fact, I think you would be more happier if you were a Satan than if you were um, a Christian. And I mean, I really respect what you did 19 years ago. And I, I'm, 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 I'm glad that you came and you were able to open up about some of these things. But I feel as if you, you along with many other people, just needed something to shield yourself with, um, shield, shield, use as a shield. And gladly for you guys, Satanism was there. But I feel as if we do not understand what it stands for. And because of all the bad things that are happening in the world, we see it fit to blame them. And I mean, as one of the rules, they say that do not go for a woman unless they invite you to. No, which unless, is, unless she gives you the mating signal, unless, which is what? Unless she's... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we can define that as many other things. But what, what I'm trying to show you is that they are harmless, especially to the most vulnerable people in our society, which is the woman. And I think we should just give them an opportunity and and just listen to what they have to say because they they they're not going around saying doing or saying all the bad things that people think they're saying and doing. And if you I one last thing, I think most of us here, all my friends and I at the back, are, <laughs> are Satanists. Based on the rules, 
but um, we just do not want to say it because we think people will laugh at us and think we're crazy. But honestly, I think people are saying to this, and it's a good thing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's honestly a good thing. Thank you. So, sorry, just to, uh, to respond to some of that, um, to your claim that you may be a Satanist without actually knowing it. For example, if I'm not Christian and I love someone, Christianity advocates loving others. But just, just because I love someone doesn't mean I'm Christian. Yeah. Yeah. I may actually practice that, but a lot of those sins or sins or proponents sort of overlap with other moralities. Yeah. Muslims also love people. It doesn't mean if you love someone, you are by virtue of that alone a Satanist or a, or a, or a Christian or a Muslim. So I think we do need to sort of be able to differentiate just by doing something. If I'm selfish, it doesn't mean I'm not Christian. <coughs> and selfishness is probably the fundamental you know, sin of Satanism. So I do think just by doing something doesn't automatically put you under the umbrella of a Satanist. Um, and, and, and that's the issue with society today. With Jay-Z who wears a shirt with a pyramid on the eye and they call him a Satanist just because of that. He might actually like the artwork. Um, um, so I just, I, I think we do need to be clear on that. Um, not to go around calling everyone Satanist just because <laughs> they're somewhat selfish or, you know what I mean? Sorry, that's, that's the point that I wanted to make. If someone commits a crime in the name of Satanism, do, or if they call themselves a Satanist and they commit a crime, do we now say that they're not a Satanist because there's nine rules that they did not follow, so or that that state you should not do that. So now they're not Satanists based on what on our opinion, because of their confession, because they take that, they take ownership. That's what they call themselves. Then they should be viewed as Satanists, not. Okay, this is getting heated. Uh, <laughs> sir, um, as a Right. <laughs> you want to respond to, to what has been yeah. said? Um, I'm, I mean, no. Mr. Anton said that people play, and he made a couple of points about, <laughs> and he spoke about teenagers thinking that they satanic and gothic people, whatever. And what I'm saying here is that people do bad things. And because there's that umbrella or that branch we can fall into, we decide to blame everything on it. And I think it's, it's just a matter of giving them an opportunity and wanting to understand what it is that they do. Because, in fact, these, most of what their rules are would not entirely go against the Constitution. And, I mean, they, they say do not harm or kill animals, which is... But what I'm trying to say here, and I will not talk for the rest of the day, <laughs> is that we just give these guys an opportunity and we stop claiming that we are satanic when we're not. And stop saying or doing things because there's them and we can use them as a shield. And that's it. Okay, still at the back. Can you hear me now? I wanted to say that um, so far the approach, I mean, the, the approach that has been used to discredit Satanism is one that is based on the consequences, and we haven't had anything that is uh, intrinsically bad about um, 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 Satanism. There are other approaches that we can use to discredit the, I mean, we can discuss an, a deontological approach to Satanism, we can discuss a metaphysical approach to Satanism, but we haven't had anything intrinsically bad about Satanism except for the consequences that we're hearing about the Satanism. And it's not the only religion that uh, threatens uh, utopia or that uh, perpetuates a kind of dystopia. We also have, like, uh, historically, we know Christians kind of uh, uh, turn the world upside down. We know Muslims right now are doing the same thing. So I want to find out what intrinsically 
is wrong with Christianity if we don't consider the consequences that it does. Because sometimes you must understand that the, the doctrine may be subverted, right? To, in order to be able to perpetuate the certain wrongs, but then intrinsically it's not bad. So that's what I want to find out. And secondly, to respond to Awanda's question, that uh, she mentioned that, uh, something about uh, we should differentiate religion and a cult. I wanted to say that maybe uh, that uh, more foundational question is not necessary to, 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 I mean, to differentiate between that because we might find an answer. Because the Constitution doesn't necessarily say that religion is the only thing that's protected. We also have freedom of conscience, freedom of belief, etc., uh, etc. Et so we could locate the cults under one of those umbrellas. Hi, my name is Mahamuthi. Um, I think that there have been um, religious killings in the name of jihad from Muslims, right? And in, within Islam, Muslims will say that people that kill other people are not Muslim necessarily. So in the same sense, I just like to use the same logic and say that um, in Satanism, there's certain principles and whatever. And some of those principles necessarily entail that there's no killing of other people. So when other people kill in the name of Satanism, they're not necessarily Satanists. They're just people who kill in the name of Satanism. Thank you, that's all. Um, before we take the next question, I just want to ask you what you would make of one of the satanic rules there. When walking in open territory, bother no one. If someone bothers you, ask to stop. <coughs> if he does not stop, destroy it. What do you make of that? Coming from the Church of Satan, what do we make of that? Me take question right here. Not, not, not so much a question. Point. But just a point as well, rather. Destroy him can be, I don't need this. I shall the time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, do I need it? Perfect. Alright. I'm, I'm, I'm just a bit cautious of the terminology that is being used by the people, I suppose, on the panel so far. Uh, Again, my brother before me, who spoke, raised a very good point. And I'm going to use current affairs as an analogy rather. If we look at ISIS, for instance, right? They are using Islam for their killings, for their conquering, for, you know, human trafficking and so forth. Muslims themselves don't necessarily consider members of ISIS as Muslims, right? So I think same can apply to this in regard to Satanism, right? Based on the rules that they are given, killing is not necessarily... Uh, what what they are you know uh, preaching out there? Destroy him can be defined. I don't know what they mean by that. I'm not an expert on you know satanic church and so forth. Neither am I. But I'm trying to look at it from a historical sociological point of view, right? So when Europeans came to Africa, killed African gods, and then in the name of you know Christianity and colonized the entire Africa, right? Can we say that you know uh, all the colonizers and imperialists were Christians? Can we? Jewish Muslims. They slaughter animals as some sort of a religious uh, religious ritual, right? Again, uh, in the video, they didn't speak about satanic rituals per se, but even if they do so, other religions do so as well, and we allow them freely to do so. You know, uh, Eid was just a few weeks ago, a week ago rather, where they you know slaughter animals in the name, in Islam. So again. Why is it that we try to you know, blame one specific you know, religious group for what they are doing and let others who are more historically you know, rooted be, be absolutely fine with those? Those are the issues I want to raise. It is really bad, I think, to label them as to, oh, satanic, you're not allowed to, while others have been doing it in the name of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam in that regard. Okay. Let me bring in our expert from the Family Policy Institute. From your perspective, what is wrong with Satanism? What, what, what have you seen as just your experience as a problem Satanism in the family structure? I'm not, I'm not an expert on, on Satanism. <laughs> I know and understand the Bible. Um, but in my um, 20 years of Christianity, um, I've got a television show, and I had to interview um, on two occasions, um, ironically, ex-policemen, that have now gone into Christian ministry that were involved in the occult unit of the South African police services, one in Port Elizabeth, the other in uh, Bloemfontein. And their, their work now entails helping teenagers uh, out of um, Satanism. Um, the one thing that seems to be a common thread amongst all these young people that got involved in Satanism uh, was that they come from broken or dysfunctional homes. 
um, and and uh, they got involved in this. There was much harm done, uh, and there was a, a lot done to rescue them and get them out of that. A lot of them became Christian as a result of the work of these of these two men, and then would um, obviously tell their story much like Adele did here. Um, as a Christian, my you know the work we do is is uh, defending and protecting, restoring family. And, and marriage as fundamental units of society because that's the way you build strong, uh, viable and prosperous societies on, uh, on strong families and marriages. Um, when it comes to belief systems, I, I believe that uh, all belief systems uh, deserve protection. Uh, that uh, whatever your belief is, whatever your, whatever it is, uh, if you want to jump around and howl at the moon, um, uh, that's fine as long as you do not harm anybody else. Simple. Because, I, like again, I, I, I don't have any, um, I was, I'm not an ex-Satanist. Uh, I don't know any Satanists, uh, except for the people that we, we interviewed. Um, so I would say that all belief systems deserve protection until they harm. So, um, that's, you know, that's the distinction of the law. The law is there to uphold justice. And so if people say, I'm a Satanist, Satanist, that's fine. You be a Satanist, that's between you and God. Uh, but if you, <laughs> you know, but if you uh, kill people, like, like recently in the news media, the young teenagers, and they try to, they kill the one teenager and try to burn her alive in a ritual and try to drink blood and all kinds of things. Now, whether they're not real Satanists and, or unreal Satanists or whatever, they did it. And they were part of a coven and the investigations revealed that. And there's a number of other cases going right back 20, 30 years uh, that always appeared in the media, media and always was associated with it. So that's the only information I have because it ended up in court cases and, and criminal effects and all of that. So, so my, my belief is um, all belief systems deserve protection, but if you're committing a crime, obviously killing people and trying to drink their blood, all those kind of things, then, then obviously we can't support that and people have to be prosecuted. Uh, she made a very important um, point earlier on that God created all of us and he's given us the right to freely choose. Now that is a fundamental fact of human civilization, that all of us have the right to make choices of our own free will. And our constitution protects that. Um, but uh, equally uh, important is the fact that uh, you, you, you have to be accountable for, for the consequences of your actions. So you can freely do whatever you do, but if you try to bite somebody on their neck and try to suck their blood, then you're obviously going to be charged for that and because there are laws to protect people's rights. So, so you have free freedom, but freedom comes with uh, responsibility. And, and the one thing I've discovered in South Africa is we speak a lot about freedom and human rights, but very little about responsibility. I think more important is responsibility, being accountable for your action. Because a lot of people do things in the name of whatever, and then when they're caught, then they're always blaming somebody else or something else. So I think freedom, but with responsibility. Um, so just wanna jump in there? Um, okay, maybe a slightly different take on, uh, on what's, been, what's been said. Is that I don't particularly see, and I'll speak from, I, I wear many hats. So one being the, the jurist or the jurisprudential person. Um, and the other being that my worldview is, is influenced by my religion as a Christian. Um, and I wish I could say that I could separate that from how I think. Um, it's, I, I don't think I'd be honest in that. I think we all have a worldview which we think along. So I'm speaking of those two hats, laying the cards out on the table. Um, but I think that, I don't think the issue um, particularly is Satanism. And, and just to respond to a few, I think there is something to look at in Satanism, and just to respond to a few of the comments that we put out there is that if we were to look at the consequences of a thing, then the consequences reveal the nature of the thing. 
in, in some way, that the fruits of a tree determine the nature of the tree to some extent. Um, so I, I don't think there is, that it is a, a futile exercise to consider the consequences of a belief system like Satanism in terms of looking at how we should deal with it. That's, that's the first thing. But even with that, I think if we're looking at consequences and the nature of a thing, I think at the root of the problem isn't belief systems. I think it's people. I think that generally the, the, the problem is with human beings. I think there's something wrong with us. <laughs> Just as a fact, I mean, I, I, at our last speaking, two things together ago, we, we discussed this at the end. Um, I, I, there's definitely not universal acceptance in my perspective that I'm going to put forward. But um, the, the problem is people. Um, <laughs> So, from a jurisprudence so allows us to think about what the law should look like. So, the constitution does protect freedom of religion. Jurisprudence allows us to go behind the constitution and say, well, was that a good decision? With the, if we, if we were to look at, at the, the period of time in, in history, known as the Enlightenment or modernism, humanity said, we are able to come up to truth and advancement and development as a people through our reason and logic and rationality. We have all the faculties necessary to advance as a society. That was modernism. That was about 1800s. It lasted a very short time because World War I and II happened. And we realized that's actually false. Left to ourselves, we are dangerous. <laughs> The 20th century alone had more deaths, and you, you, can, you can Google this, you can find this out, confirm it from the truth or not. The 20th century alone had more deaths through conflict than the other 19 centuries combined. Now when humanity said, we are able in ourselves to find out, we live in a society where that is not an immediate reality for us, that we are dangerous. But there are many societies in the world where that is a real thing to do. It's not just a theoretical discussion. Now, I think Satanism is an extreme level of that. that, that that's my perspective. I do think it's an extreme level of that. But I do think, Satanism aside, assume the, the situation is not, is not Satanism. I do think as, as people, th there's a problem. Someone described human history as a, a drunken man stumbling into walls. Yeah, just, that's just, it's just trying to find direction, trying to find a way, but always hitting some obstacle. And I do think at the, at the core of it that that's the problem. The problem is human nature. And I think the belief systems that come out of that, um, and maybe we'll get the next session of this speak about Christianity, if there's, if there's scope for that. But I think Satanism is more ex extreme, but if you look at it as itself, then I think you forget everything else that we can do to one another, aside from self-sacrifice. Yeah, self Okay. I'll take uh, the lady's question first, the comment, and then we can. Hi, so I have like a lot of perspectives based on my Christian mind, but then also um, from a legal point of view. And I don't know if I got this wrong from the second video, I think, or the first video that we watched, um, based on the rules of Satanism. Um, I think it said something about um, when you think of doing something, think of the impact on mankind or, or the earth. And I don't know if you could explain the inconsistency with the inherent rule of selfishness and like the, omin like the very ominous destroy him concept of the second rule, because I don't really understand that inconsistency. I don't think anyone in the Hispanic church can explain that to you. Uh, well, coming from me, who was caught with a dagger in my hand, and 20 years of Satanism and 10 generations of Satanism. Um, it's inconsistent. It's, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for you. Sorry, I have a question for you. The lady you just spoke. Isn't that a problem with all religions, though? There are inconsistencies <coughs> within all religions. Because in some parts, take Christianity for example, it says love one another and don't judge, and he who hasn't sinned must be the first to cast the first stone, and then you get. Christians who are saying homosexuality is bad, and even the Bible itself actually does say homosexuality is bad. Isn't that contradiction within the Christian belief system? 
is in love with all religions, that they are very contradictory. That's true, but that's based on practice, not on written rules. These are in the rules. Christian people are practicing. Like for me personally... Are you sure? <laughs> Maybe, maybe I can comment on that, if you don't mind. Um, that is a, a, common, a common fallacy that, uh, that the Bible, um, you know, the Bible says love, love everybody, not one and then it does, and, and not to judge. And so do not make a, judge, a, a judgment on another person and their action. But when it comes to homosexuality, um, it's one of many sexual sins um, condemned in the Bible by God. And so if a Christian says that homosexuality is sin, he's merely uh, saying what's in the Bible. It's not, a, it's not a judgment. It is what God has judged already. For example, if you ask me, is adultery a sin? I would say, yes, the Bible says so. It's not my opinion. Um, I'm not giving you my opinion. It's, it's the Bible. So, so, so Precisely, and the Bible is the core of religion, of the Christian religion, is it not? The core? It's called the Christian religion, and because it is the core of the Christian religion, it, it, it's all so inconsistent. How are we as men who didn't write this Bible supposed to listen to the form of the Bible? Like, it's so inconsistent. I, I fail to see what is inconsistent about God condemn, condemning sexual sin and Christians upholding what God's word, the Bible says about sexual sin. What's, what, what's he consistent about this? Uh, I'll take a question uh, from the front here. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think this one is going from the guys, the Church of Satan. <laughs> I'm not being funny. They have said so. So I think they, I'm not going to be funny. But my point is, uh, I mean, uh, this religion is is just born yesterday. Not it's just for the eight years old. And uh, if we're looking at all religions, it's just this religion. I mean, the guy was very lazy. With just nine rules, they don't have even literature. <laughs> Which religion? I'm not ridiculing them. I'm just trying to say. I mean, you just can't. Base, come on, give us something, you know, give us something, you know. You're having the Quran that is this big, you're having the Bible, which has got so many chapters. And then the only thing that I want to ask, who were they following before? Before 1966, what were they following? I think that's my question. Um, let me take a couple of questions on the side, sir. And then I'll go this way. Um, afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Senna. Um, Senna. Senna. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to agree with what my fellow brother there said earlier. He said, you know, we all live in a certain way, but you know, we, we, we like to put a title to everything. And I feel that's the problem with human nature. We want to give a name to acting in a certain way. And I think that's irrelevant. I feel like the concept of having religion is not necessary. In the sense that if I'm to act in this way, I must now be a Christian. If I to act in this way, I must now be satanic. To feel like we should all just live, you know. Yeah, and giving a title to everything is really pointless. Yeah. Um, okay. um, hi guys, my name is Hugo Koza. Um, one of our colleagues said, um, I'm think on the top, you said that um, the Bible tends to contradict itself, saying that, okay, we know that when God created the world, he created um, Adam and Eve, man and woman. You go and travel down to the books, your gospels, you know, where Jesus says that we shouldn't judge one another. But then to answer a question, if as a Christian man, you know, I become what uh, a gay person, homosexual, you know, or my brother um, is a uh, gay, I've got a duty to correct that person. I've got that responsibility to show him the way. 
I am not, I, I, I'm not judging him. It's, it's, it's not called judging, it's about knowing the, your, your Bible. I'm not judging him. It's because I am directing him. Secondly, they brought up an issue of saying that, um, yes, we're talking about Satanism over here. And um, Sir, there in France, said that um, one of the biggest problems of Satanism is that it's with us people and it's the lack of, you know, um, probably parents at home, you know, um, educating their children, talking, uh, talking to their children. That is the truth. Because the problem with South Africa today is that, you know, we've got the media world that is educating your children today. If you as a parent are not doing anything about your child's education, if you as a parent are not concerned of what your child is learning within the school or who they hang out with, you know, and what they do with their friends, you'll get results of, you know, them wanting to be part of the so-called Illuminati, wanting to be like Obo Jay-Z and Beyonce because they think that it's cool. And that is the reason of it today. That is why we have such a high epidemic of Satanism in South Africa. Not only here, but in, even in Soweto. We have schools. We'll be having ministers going there and praying and interceding in those schools because children are getting involved in Satanism because by them getting involved, there's also rankings within that. This is the king of uh, certain things. Even churches that are being brought up today in the Christian world, are they preaching the word of God? No, they're not. Many of them come, you know, it's written in the Bible, many will come in my name saying that, Father, 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 we've preached your word, we've done this and this. But we are living in the last days. We are living in days where, you know, um, there is a rise, you know, in Satanism. You may be laughing, yes, you may be narrow-minded, but look at the whole rise of Thank you. Um, hi. Well, firstly, I think that we need to differentiate between theory and practice. Well, with the Satanism Bible, the Church of Satan Bible, there's a lot of theory that says the rules are this, this, this and that. But then when we look at the practice, we don't really see how those rules actually apply in the practice. What we see is something totally different. As she mentioned that, she knows the rules are this, this and that. But then in the practice, within the practice, there's rituals that are done. There's a lot of things that are really being done there that are not mentioned in their own Bible, right? And then when you look at um, the thing about human sacrifices and all that, I think the question that we should be asking is this, is this a spiritual matter or is it a physical matter? Because I feel like we kind of wishy washing the two spiritual things and um, physical things, right? So if we look at this spiritually, without human sacrifice, Satanism wouldn't be there. So to say that um, taking away the practices and everything will make the, the whole Satanism thing right is kind of absurd, I can say. I'm sorry to say this. And if you look at Christianity, going back to my point about theory and practice, if you look at Christianity, the theory is there, the Bible is there, but then until you apply it properly, until you practice it properly, there are things in the Bible that you will never know. There are things that you will never be revealed to you because you only read the Bible as a normal book. Going to what he said about the Bible contradicting itself, it goes back to how you read the Bible and what you want to know exactly in the Bible. If you read it to just know what's written there, then you'll know what's written there and that's it. But if you read it to know God, and then you'll know what exactly Christianity is about. I think the primary uh, thing that you're all missing out here is that Satanism itself doesn't say these people should do what they do. The video itself, the first video, recognized the fact that there's different kinds that aren't true Satanism. But because everyone's running around and doesn't believe in Satanism per se, we're blaming it. At the end of the day, someone's dying, okay? It's a crime. Whether I'm a Christian, when a Christian kills someone, um, a Christian just killed someone. You don't hear that on the news. You just hear someone got murdered, someone got raped, whatever. But because these people are professing to be something that they're not even, why are we stigmatizing Satanism to be such a bad thing? I personally think leave Satanism. If you want to be a Satanism, be a Satanism. The fact that the Satanism itself is saying this isn't us and we're not going to get involved, we have nothing to do with this, clearly shows us that isn't the problem the people, like Isaac said, the people themselves and not the religion. If we feel Satanism is a 
insufficient religion because it's Bible's 50 pages and like whatever else. That's your opinion. Yeah. I might feel that your religion of Christianity is useless. I might feel the Bible is completely stupid. I might feel like anything yeah. doesn't ma matter. But you don't see anyone. I mean, even with regards to how the Muslims who are doing what they're doing and bombing and everything, I don't think as a global thing they've been stigmatized as much as Satanists have been. Why? Why is it such a problem? Especially from the point of view that Satanists, true Satanists say, this is not us, this is not what we stand for. At the end of the day, look, you kill someone, you're gonna get punished from it. Maybe the issue is awareness, maybe that's the problem, and maybe this is where the Satanists themselves need to step in now and be like, we need to make people aware of who we are, what we're doing, and if you don't want to do this, disassociate yourself from it and stop saying you're doing this in our name. Sure. I mean, like, the thing with, for example, Ebola, how someone in the States said it came from South Africa and the government said, hey, Ebola didn't come from us. Why are we not, I mean, as soon as there's something to do with human rights, we've got thousands of people from everywhere, cults, everywhere, no, this is what human rights is, everything. But as soon as you see a Satanist killing someone on the news, you don't have a Satanist there trying to explain what it is. So I think the issue is we also need to have a sense of awareness. What is Satanism? What do they stand for? The fact that we feel it's insufficient, do you yourself know what pastry of the, of the, of the Satanist the Bible says no, but you can tell me what the Ten Commandments are? Why are you making it seem like Satanists are such a problem when you don't even know what they stand for yourself? You, you're saying that from the three minutes of a video, they're insufficient and they're contradictory because you know what your Bible says. Go read their Bible, find out what they are about, and then come back and say, that Satanism itself is a problem. Or maybe introducing us to something. If I can just a minute, Paul. I think I think a lot of assumptions are are just being made here. Um, I don't know if there's anybody in the room, in this auditorium, uh, that could, with complete authority, tell us what a true Satanist is. Anybody here? What, what a true Satanist is? You are died in the world, no Satanism, and you know what a true Satanist is. My comments was, um, everything I've read, <laughs> everything I've, I've seen in, in the media connected with Satanism was negative, was criminal, all of that. So I obviously, as a result of that, that, that formed a view of that because that's all I've seen. But then you have a Dahlia who's, who's been a Satanist for uh, 20 years and she understands that she's been in there. Anybody else here been a Satanist for 20 years? Okay, so, so when, when, when Adele um, it gives us a um, you know, perspective on her experiences for 20 years in Satanism, I have to respect her and her uh, experiences and her knowledge of it because she's been in it 20 years. There's nobody here that's ever been in Satan in maybe even one year and are authorities on the subject. So we just have to come up with it. You have something pressing to say for... <laughs> Um, mine is a very is a very quick one. Uh, it's just to ask, in light of everything that's been discussed, uh, and particularly on the back of, I guess, the last two points, does the Constitution have room to protect Satanism? And and I think the point that was raised previously that's important is that we also have a criminal law that deals with the with the crime of murder and and the crimes of theft and so forth, if it means, I don't know if they're dares or whatever, I don't know what the ins and outs are, and the harming of other people, there's a, there's a criminal law for that, but from a constitutional point of view, um, is there, you know, would we, are we, would we accept, is there, is there a constitutional defense or is there an exclusion? Thank you. Um, to sort of answer your question, uh, in simple terms, yes, there is room. Um, I think no religion or any right is absolute. I think that's the fundamental thing. And I think we're getting lost in digging into the actual fundamental practices of each religion. No religious practice or belief is unfettered. That's why we have the law. The law accommodates and, 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 and 
all the nuances, as Muslims, as Jewish people, as, as Christians, etc. It, it accommodates everyone. So to the extent that even Christianity, if it did allow for killing, the Constitution wouldn't allow it. So the, the law actually steps in and says, it doesn't matter what this particular religion says. Even if Satan, Satanism does mean you can kill, you're not allowed to do it because of the Constitution. So even your religious rights aren't unfettered. There are restrictions on them. There are, the, the law is able to accommodate any religion. You can start a religion today. You can start a religion in Scientology or whatever you want. And you can say that as part of this religion, um, we want to, we, we believe in killing people. But you won't be allowed to do it. We can allow your religion to exist and we can acknowledge it. But certain proponents of that religion won't be, will be in conflict with the Constitution or with whatever law we have. And so you won't be able to do it. So to answer your question, it doesn't matter what Satanism says. Because there's a law and we've all agreed that's what the Constitution is. The Constitution means we as South Africans have come together and said, this is the document that binds every single behavior we have. I have the right to speak, I have the right to say what I want, to express, but there are limits. I can't say everything I want. And that's a fundamental uh, pillar of liberalism. Liberalism means I can do what I want and live the way I want, to the extent that I don't interfere on your liberty. So I have liberty, but I can't interfere on your liberty. That's the only rule. That's the, that's, that's the fundamental idea behind liberalism. And so if you believe in Satanism, then you can to the extent, as long as it doesn't interfere on my right. So I don't, I don't think it's, 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 it's prudent to get lost in the details of what Satanism is and what Christianity. Christianity at one point, uh, or some could argue, allowed slavery. It, it mentioned the word slave and master. And, but today, the law doesn't allow slavery. So it doesn't mean Christianity has been invalidated or it's not allowed anymore because it allowed slavery. But unfortunately, or fortunately, we have agreed now that slavery is outlawed in our law. So we, it doesn't matter if the Bible says that there's slavery allowed, or, or, or if, if, if Muslim Islamic extremists allow for, for murdering and terrorism, we have a law that says you can't do that. And I think we just need to remember that, that I don't want to pretend the law is a panacea to all our problems and all our concerns, but it is the umbrella that accommodates every single religion. There's, room for any religion, there's room for any belief under the Constitution, as long as it doesn't conflict or, 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 or violate what we have held uh, as the Constitution. But that's the supreme law of the Republic. Uh, um, so just to just just respond to that, um, and if I go as far as saying that liberalism is what underpins the Constitution, because I think there are some things that the Constitution doesn't allow. That if it's a question of euthanasia, uh, taking your own life, the law doesn't let you do that. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, your right to life doesn't extend to you taking your own life. Even if the only person who may have an interest in your life is yourself. Um, or, or torture. There's an, inc there's an incident in... Um, I think it was in Germany where, um, and this is just strange, but someone put up an ad on the internet um, asking, yes, asking for um, volunteers to um, come to his house and he would kill them, cut them up, and eat them. And he got like 40 responses and he interviewed people and he found a match, one person really wanted to do it, and he agreed to it, and he allowed himself to be killed and eaten. And this guy was charged with something. I mean, they didn't have a law for it at the time, but the, the courts found him guilty, and he was sent to jail. And apparently, at the end of that story, apparently he became a, a vegetarian because he didn't. He thought that animals were not treated well. So, and in prison, it's a strange ending to the story. But in essence, I don't think, I don't think liberalism is an absolute worldview that the Constitution promotes. So I think the question we're asking here is, if we were to look at Satanism, and if we were to see that the consequences of Satan, Satanism are such that we are so unhappy with it, then is it simply a matter of saying, well, it's your religion, and you decide what to do, um, however depraved it makes you, if that's the consequence. Again, so there's evidentiary things to look at. If, if that's how we, that's the sort of person it makes you become, well, we have no interest in it. I don't think we say that for everything. We don't say that for 
for suicide and euthanasia. The question is, should we be saying that about certain <coughs> religious practices? I think that's the question on, on debate today. <coughs> Hi, Paul. For, thank you for eventually kind of coming around to this point. Um, I think a lot of what I have to say would be moot. So rather, what I'm going to do is just put out a few cautions to linger, right, off the back of especially the last two comments. And the first is the danger of essentializing any concepts, as, as the second last speaker did mention. So we can't claim to be authorities on Satanism as much as I don't think any one person can, as much as no other person can be an authority on any other religion or any other belief system. That's the whole point of belief systems. And I would submit that that should make us reflect on why it's important to protect a belief system, why it's important to protect free speech, even if you disagree with the content. And on the topic of content, I would caution against the arrogance of imposing our own belief systems, as much as we would believe them to be true and correct, and whether that's based on empirical evidence or not, using that to, to kind of comment on the content of a religion or the content of anything else, and thereby deprive people of entitlements in terms of, as our the last gentleman or the second last gentleman said, their, the supreme law of the country, their constitutional rights, right? So I recognize the argument of consequence, but we recognize that this, whatever label you attach to it, it becomes semantic, right? Whatever label you attach to it, you can't, I mean, banning Satanism, saying that a child who puts that down as their religion on a form at school you know, saying that banning that is going to stop killings, ritualistic killings, is also something of a fallacy, right? But what is it going to do when we start saying, right, today it's Satanism, and that's kind of commonplace being demonized, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the next day it's another minority religion. It could be Sikhism, it could be Buddhism, it could be any other thing. And if we, again, allow the lines of form and substance, sometimes we do need to recognize form for the very fact that we're not always in a position to understand the substance. So I'd recognize that, and also the kind of typical cliche, the law students would hopefully roll their eyes to this, but that you can swing your arms around as much as you want, but they must stop short of the next person's nose. And that is our test, and that is the concept. So to some extent, the argument of whether or not Satanism should be allowed is actually moot, because we cannot ban a religion, we cannot ban a belief system, we can ban actions through a you know, democratically elected legislation, etc., etc. right? And they can't be assumed consequences, especially when you're dealing with a realm of so abstract as religion, where there is not one doctrine. And I mean, a church that sprung up Satanism, Paganism, like alternative beliefs to like fundamental religious streams have existed for centuries. We can't kind of have a banned list. I mean, surely as we, the more we talk about exclusions and limitations on others, the more issues like slavery, like political exile, etc., should start to resonate, right? Um, and uh, yeah, so, so, that's, so that's the, yeah, that's the fundamental of it, recognizing that our starting point is the Constitution, we recognize limitations, not to get caught up in the semantics of it and become exclusionary. And also just noting that it would be nice to have a few more female panelists <laughs> <laughs> on the point of non-exclusionality. Okay, uh, just a question there. Um, so, resonating on what you said, why is the government therefore getting a task team together to get into schools to talk about harmful religious practices? It seems to me that there's a contradiction. So we're talking about the rights to uh, religion being very, very expensive and includes uh, Satanism as a, as a religion. But it seems that the action of the Department of Basic Education is actually saying something else. No, they acknowledge um, the Constitution. And we talk about this a lot, the fact that we cannot judge other religions, that we're not allowed to, um, to you know, prevent people from practicing what they believe. But the moment when it becomes a danger to a community, the moment when a religion takes lives, obviously we go back to the to the to the core issue that you're allowed to practice but you're not allowed to break the law. And and that's what we see in schools over and over and over again. So that's the concern. And um, they didn't decide to, to stop the task team six months ago. This has been in planning for a very long time because it's been a problem in schools for a very long time. Um, all the deaths, all the mutilations, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a major concern. So obviously there is something, and uh, well, in, when we're in our meetings, we actually never talk about Satanism although the people practicing these, these practices and um, the people doing the murders they um, they claim that it's they say that it's Satanism, 
but in meetings we always talk about potentially harmful religious practices which can which can include every religion or any religion um, but we, we focus on Satanism because the guys doing this is involved while well, they say it's because of Satanism they give glory to Satan and in the name of Satan sacrifice this and draw blood here and and do that. So unfortunately, it seems that people are only target, targeting Satanism, but they are targeting themselves. These guys, they put a badge on their forehead and so on. Oh, and, 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 and it's actually sad, because as I said before, um, I, I respect people from other religions, and I know that I think if the sacrifice is going to be a deal, it, it would change things. And um, just another thing, we, we tend to think that because there's a majority of, of a religion who practice uh, their religion peacefully, we tend that we, we think it shouldn't be a problem, we shouldn't look at it, we shouldn't criticize it. But usually the problem doesn't come in with the, with the majority of people who, pra who safely practice their religion. It comes in with a, with, a, with a minority who wants to kill, who wants to destroy, and who's giving Satanism a bad name, who gives Islam a bad name, who gives whoever a bad name. So, but, but that's the concern. We, we will not get a task team together to talk about the good things of religion. That's not the concern. We talk about the issues, the death, the blood, the sacrifices. That's the issue. So when you refer to a practice, are you referring to the religion itself or what it advocates? So in other words, um, does your test team actually allow for Satanism to exist? Or are you saying to, to kids, you may practice yes. Satanism, just don't care? Yeah. There's even a, a Satanist on our panel. So we have these people <coughs> on our panels, um, and, and they bring, you know, they, they share the information of what they believe and what they practice in their in their ritual. So we've added some things to um, to the to the list of things that we have to adhere to. Any religion in schools have to be, for example, um, transparent in their practices. Transparency in all religions is important. The moment when there's secrecy, the moment when there's control, and that's one of the signs of um, a cult is that people cannot just leave out of their free will. It's taken away from them. And uh, I think the Constitution also covers that. You should still be able to, uh, to exercise free will. And um, so we, we don't encourage people to be Satanists, but we don't judge them. So when we go to schools, we, we tell them that it's OK to, to practice whatever religion. Just remember the moment when there's blackmail, when people forces you to do things, the moment when, and then we teach them about what, what is you know important, um, uh, killing someone. You know, they also actually children who believe that you know someone, an adult, tells them to kill someone, they will do it. So we, we we tell them that that's not acceptable. So yeah, we, we are busy, but it's still in the development phase. So we have not really gone into schools that much, and we are still just looking at certain areas that's being targeted. Um, into you know certain towns where we have seen um, cults and uh, sorry sacrifices, and we, we target them first because they are the problem areas. Uh, can, just before you go on, Paul, can I just make a statement? Um, I've studied the Bible um, for 20 years. Nowhere in the Bible can I find um, it allows for slavery. I, I've yet to find that. Just what my what I do find in history is that two men, William Wilberforce, who for 25 years, based on his Christian biblical belief, fought against slavery and it was abolished in Britain because of his work, William Wilberforce, and then Abraham Lincoln that fought for and signed the Emancipation Proclamation in the United States of America, again based on his Christian biblical belief that all men are created free and equal before God. So the Bible, I think it's a fantasy, I don't know where it comes from. The, the Bible strongly talks about the story of Sarah. You know Sarah in the Bible? Abraham and Sarah. I, I don't know, I personally know, but I have it in the Bible. <laughs> the first son of Abraham was born out of from the slave that they kept, unless I am wrong. Uh, concubine. Concubine. Concubine who are part of the slaves at the time. Concubine. So it was like, Listen. Thank okay, you. listen. People did things. The, the, the Bible tells stories of people, warts and all. They never hide any of those things. Okay? But the Bible is clear on behavior, what God says is acceptable and which is not. So, so for example, David, in the Bible, in the Bible, the Bible calls David 
uh, a man after God's own heart, King David. But yet he committed adultery with, with Bathsheba and had her husband killed. So just by the fact that it records those events, the Bible doesn't condone it. It's telling you what happens and there was consequences for David and, and his actions. Um, so there are a number of things in the Bible that records it, that tells you. Um, and if you're a Bible scholar, if you're really interested in studying the Bible, you will understand, obviously. But if you want to, um, if you want to criticize the Bible and, well, it's inconsistent and everything, you're going to find that as well. But anyway, that's just my point. And they're showing me all kinds of things. Can you from you? <laughs> How you going to schools and you educate them on the issues and the problems? Isn't that within itself also a problem? Because if you're going to come to me and say don't kill because it's bad, and, hey. whereas if you educate me on what I can, because you, okay, you first said that we don't say don't be a Satanist, it's just don't kill and do the bad those bad things. So now instead of going with that view of telling me not to do the bad things, why are you not educating me on how to be? a good Satanist thing. That's why I think the women thing is an issue. Like, why are you, if you're going to come to me and say, don't kill because the ghost station can't, you can't kill people. I mean, there's only so many excuses you can come up, you can come up with for not to kill. But if you tell me that you can still believe what you want to believe and be a Satanist, but you do not harm animals. Satanists love animals. We don't want to harm children. We love children. If you come to me with that and explain why children are sacred, why animals are sacred, why we should be like other animals and do, you know, what animals need to do. But I think we sh there should be kind of a... Can I just ask you, can I just ask you something? If a Satanist and their belief system is not in God, it's in Satan, all right? And they have this belief system that they have conjured up. It's not based on, on the Bible. Uh, it's based on a book they have written or Anton LaVey or some man has written, okay? And so when, when, when you go to a Satanist and you say to them, you must um, uh, respect animals, you must respect children and other people, you must love them, you must treat them as equals, you must see their, their goodness, all those kind of things. What is the basis for the Satanists, you know, because if I say that to somebody, I'm going to say God's word, the Bible says that. The That's Satanist why. The Bible itself is one of the, the, I don't know what they called it, but the nine, like, things. Thanks. No, no, no. The, 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 yeah, the loud sins, or whatever. Saying that we love animals. So it's not like but, our basic. But it also says selfishness, selfishness, selfishness. Selfishness means about you and getting everything for yourself. I'll, and then uh, if the person doesn't obey you or, or doesn't stop uh, annoying you or whatever, destroy him, how do you reconcile all of that? You know, I, I certainly feel like that. I, I just okay. think, I think just based on what the point I was trying to make, that maybe the Department of Education needs to start looking at another, not another way, kind of scrap the way you're doing it, but an extension of yeah. Your education. I, I agree with what you're saying. We, we should teach people how to be good people, not hurting other people. But let me just ask this question. If you have children and you hear that a Satanist will come to your child's school to teach your child how to be a good Satanist, how many of you will allow that? Okay, so the, based on based on the track record of Satanism in schools and the satanic crimes in our country, it's a battleground out there. Again, I'm not against Satanists. I'm against the practice of Satanism because I've been there, done that, got the scars, the stretch marks, and the t-shirt. I know what's happening there. They might say that they never do these things, but I know they do. And um, the, the history repeats itself. And we can see the proof of the tree, the, the fruit of the tree. We can see it happening there. And you will not know how serious this is unless you get to a scene and you have to clean that scene. And the blood is sitting on the ceilings and the walls and the floors and these body parts scattered all over the room. You might say that you do not believe in Satanism or satanic crimes until you get to that scene. And we have to, we have a responsibility um, in our country, whether you call yourself a Christian or whatever, 
to um, protect our children. That's the main thing. And if it means that I'll have to go into a school and tell them not to commit crimes, I'll do it. Um, I don't think I'll teach them how to be good Satanists. I'll just teach them, them rather not do this. Not not, not be, be a Satanist, but don't do these crimes. There's consequences. There's bad things that's going to happen, and you might lose your life. You might, and there's, I mean, this thing is much bigger. We're not only looking at rituals. We're only looking at what's happening at schools. There's a huge human trafficking thing going on. There's drugs. The, this thing is so, so much bigger than you can ever, ever imagine. And um, I'm just a voice for that. I can only tell you what I've lived. I can only tell you what I experienced. I can only tell you what I've seen. And, and I can really hope that all of you will walk away from here and that you will have a change in your hearts and um, pray that pray that your child never gets involved in this. Okay, two burning questions. Um, top three and I'll come back here. Um, hi to everyone, my name is Chalfan. Um, based on a Christian foundation, there's a lot of contradictory statements that have been made today. Right? Firstly, let's start here. Mm -hmm. The problem that we have, um, I can just generalize and say society and government in a way, we want to fight spiritual things physically, and that will never happen. So the problem that we're having is we say that we have Satanism, the site, right? And then we say it has all these bad things that happen in it. And then somehow we have the government trying to cop what is happening in Satanism. And then they're saying they want to go out and speak to children and say that and discourage them from doing all of these things, right? So basically, let's bring this in and more practical manner so you want to destroy a tree by removing its fruits that will never work rather stop removing the fruits and cut out the roots right so we're having a lot of controversial matters that are coming in the house um, now and then right so basically it goes back to this point let us stop fighting spiritual matters physically because we'll never win this battle right and we're coming back to say um, there was a statement that was made to say that let us teach people to be good, uh, good Satanists, right? Let us go back to the basis of Satanism, right? Satanism, Satan, Satanism, right? So let us um, look at the Bible version of it, right? What is Satan um, portrayed as? Evil, deceitful, right? So we want to come and say from, we want to take something that is dumped in the mud and put it on the wall, but we say that is skin. It will never happen. And then there was a point that was made to say that um, you have a particular, you have a freedom to do something up until a certain basis, and therefore you should be open in blame. I think Adele uh, made that point, right? To say that it is allowed if you are coming in blame. But then the problem with society right now is that we're blindfolded. And the thing that hurts me the most is that we do not want to remove that blindfold and look at what is happening. So this is what happens in Satanism. There are things that are happening, but then we're given a wallpaper to be looking at and focused and focused on it while the most fundamental matters are happening behind it. So I can make an example with what is on the screen right now. First rule says. Do not kill non-human animals unless um, you are attacked for for your, or, or for food, right? Something like that. So we're having a rule that is saying, so do not kill non-human animals. And then clearly constitution says that people have the right to life and therefore we're not supposed to do uh, particular things or kill a person, right? But then let's go back to the second rule. When walking in open territory, bother no one. <clears throat> And if someone bothers you, ask him to stop. If he does not stop, destroy him. So we're saying one rule that is saying do not kill and the other one that is saying kill. So the problem that we had is that um, the Bible is contradictory and that matter was dealt with to say that it's a matter of how you read the Bible. But then let us go back to what is happening right now in um, society, let's say. So we're having, um, if I could make an example, if I could walk out of the street right now, pop out a gun and kill someone, I would go to jail, right? So that is a way to try and stop my actions. But then, since I say this is a spiritual matter, it's different in a way. So if a person goes out to kill someone or 
they are working in open space, they are bothered somehow, and then they ended up destroying the person. Therefore, we're saying that they should go to jail. And then you, in another sector, you're saying, let us not infri infringe on people's religion. Basically, that is infringing on a person's religion because the, re the religion openly says you can kill someone if they bother you. But then constitution is saying, do not kill someone. So how do we try and stop Satanism? Because clearly going out and talking to people about stopping Satanism is really not working. Because if a Satanist would go out and stop and kill someone, Yes, we would arrest them, but that does not stop them from being a Satanist. If they happen to go to jail and they kill someone, they are what I want to do about it now. All right, uh, before we go to just one over here, hand up here. I'd just like to say that the purpose of the Constitution is to protect. And we're saying that we want to protect all religions, right? But then we also have people killing people and doing, um, drinking blood and all sorts of things, saying they're doing it in the name of Satanism. So how do we stand up and say, we want to protect, and then at the same time say, we don't want people to kill, but we want to protect everyone. It makes no sense. So let's do what the, what the Constitution is there for, protect. Protect the lives of the people that are being killed and having their blood drank and all sorts of things. So limit the right to religion, is that what you're saying? Yes, it should be limited. Every other right is limited. Why then are we saying, no, this one is special because it's religion? Just because people get emotional about something doesn't mean we should give it special preference. Uh, sir? <laughs> um, uh, um, I don't have a question so much. I think it's just an assessment. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not very little about Christianity and very little about Satanism, but I, I don't agree with the idea that, well, it was said somewhere that the, the, the substance here is not as important as the consequence. I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I also don't necessarily agree with the idea that um, people are the problem. I think fundamental to every uh, religious belief is the specific principles it has. And so we must be able to, to, to um, pay adequate attention to that. And I think what the, uh, a lot of what's happening here is uh, we, we, I think first of all, Satanism is not being taken seriously. And I went to a primary school where they played me a documentary about Satanism saying, don't be satanic, it's wrong. And if I was sitting there as a Satanist, I mean, surely I would have had several of my most fundamental rights violated, right? So I think there is a problem here of not taking the, the, the very heartfelt beliefs of Satanists seriously. Yeah, we're all laughing, we're poking fun at them, don't kill non-human animals. And I think these specific uh, beliefs must be taken seriously. The next point I want to make is I think there's an escape route being taken here, and I think it's, it is being taken a lot by the religious side, which is that it's, uh, we, Satanism doesn't say kill people, they're the killers, so let them go. Uh, jihadis or ISIS blows up, they're not Islam, so let's re dissociating ourselves from that. I think um, you, you cannot, the, I think fundamentalism and extremism is a problem to the extent that the, the, the fundamentals themselves are a problem. So you can take an example which says, love everyone you see as much as you can, when you can. The most extreme version of that wouldn't be a problem. And so I think, yeah, we should just make sure that we try to find an adequate solution to this problem without necessarily pointing out the instances where there are one or two instances of extremism and take that in as, in as an escape route. It doesn't provide a solution to this. Satan is, Satan is once you erect a church in his community, but will be killed because of that. So, yeah. uh, can I just say something here, Paul? The, the Constitution is essentially a, a, a list of rules, okay? It's a list of rules. It's a wish list. And, and it's laws, and it's up to the people whether they're going to obey those laws. You put the laws down, and you're hoping people are going to obey. South Africa is called the rape capital of the world because thousands of women, 65,000 women are raped annually in this country. But the Constitution expressly forbids them. Children are raped, more than 25,000 children are raped and sexually abused. Four month old babies are raped by 40 year old men in our country on a regular basis. There's crime, there's corruption, there's all kinds of horrid things. People are being murdered, 
homes have been broken into, robbed, the whole duty. We, we have a huge list of problems, but yet we got the, the, the they argue the, the best constitution in the world. So my argument to you is what the hell is the use of the best constitution in the world if there's so much chaos in our society? Because at the end of the day, putting up a constitution with a whole lot of good laws and rules doesn't really matter to people, apparently. It's in the heart of mankind. You've got to change the heart of man. Because even the American Constitution, the Supreme Court Justice said this 200 years ago. He said, the Constitution is made for a religious people and for the people that understand that their hearts have been changed at love and all those kind of things. And it, 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 it doesn't really matter to people that if they want to kill, they're going to kill. And you can see that in South Africa. If they want to rape, they're going to rape. If they want to steal, if they want to destroy, they're going to do that anyway, constitution or no constitution. Are you telling me that all the people committing crimes in South Africa, the murder, the rapes, the abuse of children, all of those kind of things, they're doing it because they don't know there's a constitution? Or because they don't know it's wrong? Or they are unaware of the laws of this country? Like you rape a woman and, oh, I didn't know that was wrong. I'm <laughs> sorry, nobody told me I have that law. People know the law. People know it's right and God has given mankind a conscience. He knows that. He overcomes that because evil is in his heart. Mankind's hearts must be changed and then they'll come in line with the constitution because self-government is needed. And only Jesus Christ can change people's hearts. Amen. Not the Constitution. All right. Um, it would seem, it would unfortunately seem, it is five past four. We're supposed to stop at four. The panel is still around. What we're going to do now is allow you to have uh, some refreshments, courtesy of. Um, the, the Satanic Association of South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> After this discussion, you're still like this. Um, so, <laughs> uh, no, the food is actually sponsored by the university. So, the food is actually in the foyer. Um, please make sure that you go this way. You can engage with the panel. Have uh, one-on-one -on -one discussions, intimate, emotional discussions. They can handle it, and they will take your questions. But thank you very much for coming through. Uh, we should do this again, right? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.